Hi everybody and welcome back to my lab. Today's lecture is going to be on lab 9, our final lecture for the for CAD 1133 and CAD 2131 uh, Proteus portion. And today we're going to be discussing some advanced simulation as well as some, some interesting layout techniques that allow you to really bring your presentation of, of your drawings to to the forefront and make them very professional okay so without further ado uh, let's uh, let's dig into our lecture okay now today's lecture is actually going to be fairly simple fairly short uh, there's not a whole lot of homework and it does directly apply to your to your final project so do do take the time to do it and and uh, get some free marks and we will we'll take full credit for it in our in our uh, in our capstone project okay so um, as as we've discussed with AutoCAD and and Proteus and and any other software package quite often you want to have a, a title block that represents your company and shows a little bit of personalization as well as it needs to be clean neat and 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 concise the default that we've been using uh, is quite cluttered it has extraneous information in it that that's bothersome uh, and you can't read it because it tends to go off the page and so what i'd like to show you today is how to create something similar to what i what i have here and so you can see I've cleaned cleaned it up so I have I have a title I have the uh, the sheet name I have the author I have the revision I have the the date and time the page number and the page count as well as a nice little 2d graphic and to me this looks very nice if you don't like it you can absolutely uh, create your own and this is somewhere that you can show some artistic flair all right so how do we do this uh, what you need to do is in your schematic capture you'll need to find the template button across the top and you want to go to uh, master sheet and in your master sheet anything that you put in here uh, if it's a component if it's a 2d drawing if it's if it's a, a bit of text it's going to show up on every page okay so be, be aware of that and know that know that uh, some care and time here will absolutely pay for itself now uh, down in the down in the title block you can see that there are their defaults uh, if you use if you use the the template that we have been using there's there's a series of of fields in there and these fields can be edited you can take them out you can put in more you can move them around and make it make it your own um, now that doesn't mean that you can put anything in there and have it dynamic the fields that are dynamic I've gone and made a list okay and I will <clears throat> update this to to our uh, to our Dropbox uh, but things that you would like to have obviously are your design title the sheet title um, you would uh, definitely want to have the author on there and you may want to have the time and date and what have you one thing that you probably don't want is the path name and that's that's what's been causing us so much trouble this information is actually very hard to find and uh, so I recommend you uh, take take down this link okay uh, so down download the download the the file and uh, and grab the link and for those that don't have uh, don't have access to it um, here you go there's the the full web website you can jot that down uh, perhaps I'll link it down in the comments um, but it, it's uh, it's an old document it's still relevant and absolutely take the time to to uh, look at that all right and so once we once we've 
created or modified our 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 template that we want we can go ahead and save it uh, now when you save your template you're going to want to put it in in the templates folder and so take a few minutes find out where that is on your computer and and place it there that way when you start a new project you can pick it from the list because one, one thing that's not easily done is to to browse to it to a folder that elsewhere this is a problem if we happen to be at the school but uh, you you don't need to worry about that right now since most of you are working off your your own personal computers uh, you may want to save it to a thumb drive if you're not and then drop it in to whichever folder you need to uh, when when starting a new project it's important that you do select it uh, from a new project otherwise it's it's difficult not impossible uh, to to bring it in uh, you can save it as a as a uh, 2d graphic uh, option and then insert that into a blank but it's much much easier just to have your 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 template set up all right so take some time pause the video and uh, go go at, go at that for a little bit and when you come back we can we can uh, we can talk about the next portion advanced simulation all right so advanced simulation We've experienced some issues in the past where we weren't able to simulate very well in Proteus. The reason being is that our computers, uh, our computers tend not to be the best. Uh, Proteus is not really great at uh, trying to hyper-thread uh, simulations, so we end up with a situation where we can't we can't simulate in real time. And so one of the things that we can do is create something like this analog graph, okay, this analog analysis, where we take a look at what's happening in this system, and we take a long time to get there. So it, it's, it's, it, it's taking its time to make sure that it, you end up with a very precise uh, simulation, okay? And in here, you're going to be able to set the time base, so when it starts, here you can see we start from zero zero, uh, so so zero volts at zero time, and we see the current ramp up as it charges the capacitor, and then it, it does its thing, and the voltage is rippling, and the output voltage stabilizes, and we see that it takes about four nanoseconds to to stabilize, and so this graph tells us a lot about what's going on in this circuit, and so let's. Let's uh, let's let's go through that as as a bit of a class exercise. And so, I would like to get you to pause the video and make this circuit. This is a a very interesting circuit that I found a couple years ago. It's not very old. It was patented, uh, I think, four years ago or so, and uh, it's called a valley fill circuit. And it's really good at helping to uh, to to deal with uh, power correction factors, uh, especially with capacitors. And so I know uh, the people in my class, you've just started uh, into capacitors and and what's happening. But typically, when you charge a capacitor from from empty, the the theoretical inrush current is infinite. The fact that you have, in this case, a resistor and some wires and, and some limiting factor means that you're not going to, to get to that kind of current level. But what's neat about this circuit is um, as, as D1 is, is conducting, uh, C1 and C2 are in series, meaning that the capacitance is halved in, in, in essence. And uh, so they'll charge up to half the voltage uh, from D1 to D2. When the uh, current drops or the voltage drops and D1 is no longer conducting, the uh, C1 is allowed to discharge in, into, uh, into the VN of the voltage, uh, voltage regulator 
and so is uh, C2 through D7. And so we end up with a small 0.7 volt drop, uh, but in essence, these capacitors are now in parallel. And so what we're doing is actually filling the valleys in only. So you can see as we as we charge up the capacitor charges, right? And then as it as it peaks, it starts to discharge. And uh, then, well, sorry, once it, our voltage drops to half, then we start to discharge those capacitors. And so it means that we don't end up with these big current spikes that are happening up here and trying to fill in the entire valley it, or from peak to peak. It's just filling in down at the bottom. And so very interesting circuit. Uh, not very expensive to implement and uh, has really fit the bill for me uh, with some LED projects in the past. All right. So now that you've completed your schematic, we're going to go ahead and create a, a graph. Okay. Uh, we're going to choose a analog graph. And once you place it on your, on your, um, on your field, then you can simply drag in uh, the voltage references. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I've got one here. And so we can bring in the current, right, simply by selecting it and dragging it in. Okay, and we can bring in the AC voltage if we wished. Okay, and there we go. We can bring in lots of, lots of information. And these are uh, simply reference voltages and uh, and currents from your probe mode. Okay, so you can you can drop a current in pretty much anywhere, and um, it's fantastic. So how do we make milliamps uh, match up with volts? There's there's the question, right? So uh, one of the things that we can do is in our in our uh, in our our uh, in our graph mode we can simply double click on one of the the items and if it's going to cooperate we can put in an expression now p1 being the the input uh, we can multiply it by some value um, times two and Press the space bar to run the simulation again. There we go. And now we can see that the current, this current is, is uh, times 10. Okay, whereas this one, this, this one is where? Oh, it's over on the other side. All right. Uh, the other thing that we could do is we can actually create more. Okay, we can add add a trace to this, and in this case, we can probe. We can bring in different probes. For example, I could bring in uh, an amperage. Okay, and a voltage. I don't. Know, it's called uh, D7K, and I can. Uh, I can do some math to these. For example, uh, the current times the voltage would give me power. Okay, so my wattage. Okay, and so that's that's good. Um, now you can see over here I have another amperage and it's dropped on this side. Okay, uh, notice that this is in milli, and so you can uh, simply uh, have have two scales, one on the left, one on the right. And this is typically what you do where you'll have volts here, you'll have current here, uh, and then maybe your watts fall somewhere in between. But in the case of, of power here that we just put in that cyan, we can we can actually give it a title as well, right? 
Okay, so that pretty much sums this up. I'm sure you're going to have some questions. Please send them to me and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but it's not this this isn't a huge uh, a huge huge thing but one thing that I would like you to do is to play around with with the the circuit a little bit it's kind of interesting okay now uh, I do want to tell you how to how to output a, a drawing from here uh, because that's that's always handy and kind of required for your for your uh, for your project and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to there we go click on here uh, so that we get it into full screen mode and then we want to uh, <coughs> I'm sorry print it and the way that we want to print it is to uh, you need to maximize it right and then uh, double click on the banner to maximize it and now uh, you can print the design under the uh, file menu. So file uh, print design and sure enough there it is. Uh, we'd want it in landscape and we'd like to fit the page and you know would be great in color I guess if you happen to have uh, a color. Wow that's a neat glitch. Um, and then you'd, you'd just go ahead and send it. And so one of the things I would like you to do for uh, for your your capstone project is to is to uh, is to to uh, print that out okay now um, as far as your capstone project let's let's talk about that for a second after after I describe what we need for homework all right sorry there we go Okay, so for your homework, shoot. For your homework, what I'm looking for is to take your uh, design that you have, and specifically the instrumentation amplifier where we had the two small voltages coming in, and the one millivolt, and I would like you to uh, replicate this graph. And so we're we're looking at. Uh, channel one, channel two, so your 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 positive and the negative coming into the instrumentation amplifier and the output, and you're going to need either two scales or you're going to have to modify the math to make to make this one work. Okay, um, play around with it. I'm sure you'll get it to work, and we're good on that. Now, as far as the project uh, final project we're moving quickly towards towards uh, towards completion and so we need to we need to start uh, coalescing all of the material we need to start bringing it all together and finishing it up putting some final polishes on it and I promise that I will get back your information, uh, your grading, so that you can keep those those up to date. Uh, we do have a final test. I will uh, give a little bit of a presentation on it, and I will for sure give at least one more video out where we discuss the uh, the the project and my expectations for it. Okay, so uh, do. Uh, you know subscribe and and click the notification button uh, you know af after class is over you can unsubscribe you don't need to listen to my videos when you're not in my class I get it um, but I do want you to be able to stay up to date uh, especially during these these, uh, these last couple weeks of, of class okay so please do send me some emails uh, questions comments and uh, thanks for listening